In Ceres 2030 Sustainable Solutions Dent Hunger, we're doing um, an evidence synthesis and a cost modeling exercise. And within this exercise, we're using a variety of machine learning approaches. Right? And so what machine learning provides us the opportunity to do is look across a much broader variety of data points. So in agriculture, there's a new peer-reviewed article that's published every seven seconds. We have more than 60 repositories publishing 5,000 reports every year. How do we make sense of it? So given the amount of data that we have, we need new approaches to be able just to look at all of the new information that's coming out. And machine learning is one opportunity to do that. And so what machine learning is, is it's basically a computer algorithm that lets us look at words. So we're very familiar with models for numbers, but not as familiar with models for words. And so semantic machine learning algorithms give us an opportunity to look at the corpus of text in the same way that we would be able to use economic models to look at corpuses of data. So, you no, know, it's interesting. So machine learning has been used by the commercial sector, but it really hasn't been used in research, and particularly not in agricultural research. And the reason is, number one, it's, it's an evolving model, so it's an evolving form of computation, but realistically, there's not a lot of profit to be gained for it, for doing it for research. So you have to be able to make those justifications to people who would be interested in helping further food security um, research agendas. And so the reason that we wanted to use it in Series 2030 is because as we're looking at SDG 2, we're thinking about, okay, how are we going to increase small scale food producers' livelihoods in an environmentally sustainable way? And that requires looking at a huge, huge, huge evidence base. And so to be able to do that responsibly, we needed a new approach to be able to go and sort of dive into the evidence base. And the evidence base in this case is all of the scientific journals, the rich repositories across FAO, EFAD, the World Bank, CG centers, all of our what are called gray literature sources. Those are incredibly important sources of knowledge that are not indexed by scientific publishers. So if we have these two systems that sit kind of in parallel but not next, necessarily next to each other, we have to find a way to bring them together. And so we spent um, a good majority of time last year, about eight months, trying to just collate. What does it mean to look across the agricultural evidence base? So we're pulling together massive amounts of data. We have, I think, half a million articles that we did this machine learning approach on. And the reason was to be able to say, what works in agriculture? Which, of course, what works in agriculture is different in every context and every nuance and each way to explore it. But still, there's ways of looking for commonalities. And so the commonalities that we were looking for were basically interventions. So where are the interventions for agriculture? And what we discovered um, using this approach was, number one, a lot of people in the, res in, the, in the development community use the word interventions, but researchers aren't actually using the word interventions when they publish materials. And so our first quest was basically to be able to identify what are the many words people use when they actually mean to say intervention. So programs, initiatives, strategies, all of these words have to first be understood by the machine before we can then look for specific interventions. And so to give you an example, um, one of the first data sets that we looked at was on small scale farmers and it was a data set of 50,000 articles. And when we looked for the words interventions, it was um, less than 5% of the overall data set where we could find interventions. And yet I'm reading all of this and I can clearly see that is an intervention. And so we had to figure out a way to make basically the machine understand how humans think. And once we were able to do that using a variety of different synonyms and thinking about the models that we could use, we went from being able to find 5% of interventions in the data set to 55%. In order for us to basically build kind of a policy relevant look at how agricultural transformations can intersect with things like poverty reduction um, or environmental sustainability. We needed to build a vocabulary that allowed these, these worlds to, to work together. And what was really interesting is we found that the worlds were already interacting. And when we allowed this very unstructured approach of letting the research speak for itself, and then going through and looking for specific interventions based on the techniques that we found where we could discover the interventions, discover the words of the interventions, and then go through and actually look at the data set. We're able to find interventions for socioeconomic 
um, mechanization, technology, ecosystem services. And so just by looking at the data set in a different way, in the way a policymaker would, um, we're actually able to find that there's an incredible amount of evidence or research on these topics that already exist in the data set. Um, and so we're not looking at it in the way that a researcher would look at it, we're trying to look at it in the way a policymaker would look at it. So where can we see an intervention that's worked in Nigeria and in Mali and in Bangladesh? Is it the same intervention? Um, is what, what are the context specific nuances that we need to actually bring out in order to make these, um, kind of make these leap from research into something that's more policy relevant? Great, so we're one year into our three-year project, and so we have some initial results on our series2030.org um, website. But more importantly, the, the goal of all of this work is to basically be able to help researchers accelerate how they do research. So we're building the back end, we're building the tools, um, we're organizing the researchers, but we've brought together more than 80 researchers from 23 different countries, from backgrounds in geology, from geography, social sciences, plant breeding, economists, and we're, we've created these interdisciplinary teams that are looking at eight priority questions. The eight questions were set using some of the machine models, but then also going back and working with policymakers and donors and scientists to say, are these really the right questions that we should be looking at? Um, and once we had kind of agreement on these priority questions, we then went out and were looking, because we had already done all this data, this data work, we found the voices of emerging scientists who were already deeply engaged in this research. And we asked them to contribute these evidence syntheses that we're producing for these, these eight questions. Um, and those will be published in a special issue, or um, a focus collection with Nature Research Journals early next year. So we're looking at how can we make progress on ending hunger by 2030? And we hope that this is a way forward to promoting some new evidence by researchers who we haven't heard from potentially before, um, and then we're fusing that with a cost model um, as, as part of this project. So it's very exciting.